to give you my impressions of the Teleview Panoptic 24 millimeter. So what is it about this eyepiece that people love so much? Okay, so before we get into the actual eyepiece itself, I think it's important for people who aren't already into visual astronomy that we go over the optical tube assembly here, or the OTA, and quickly discuss what's actually happening. Light enters at this end, it passes through a front corrector plate, which is a gently curved front lens element, if you will, and then it passes all the way down to the back here, hits a mirror, comes back, hits another mirror, and then finally makes its journey down to the diagonal down here. The telescope itself then is the first phase of the light's journey to your eyeball. The second phase is through this star diagonal here and the third part is the eyepiece. Now this is the eyepiece that ships with this telescope. If you want to swap to the Teleview, that just costs you 360 pounds. And what are you getting for that money? Well, first of all, you are getting a physically wider apparent field of view. When you put your eye in the right position to the eyepiece, you will have more space around your object. What that means is that you have more context in the actual view. Let's move over to M42 Orion and we'll have a look at how that looks through the panoptic and I'll also have a look at it through the stock 25 millimeter personally give you my impressions. So the way I could describe it to you is that when I look through the Teleview, it's like I'm in a spaceship and I'm looking through a porthole. So I feel like I'm part of the scene. I feel like I'm immersed in the view. Whereas I don't get that with the plus. With the plus, I feel like I'm looking through an eyepiece on a telescope. So straight away through the panoptic you get tons of nebulosity. No matter where you look, it's sharp, it's contrasted, the background is darkened, and then you've just got this beautiful overlaid nebulosity. There's a great tool that you can use online to calculate what your actual true field of view will be for a given eyepiece and telescope combination. I'll drop a link to that in the video description. It's on astronomy tools. And for this 68 degree apparent field of view through this 24 millimeter panoptic on this 1500 millimeter C6 Celestron, I get a 1.09 degree field of view. If you pop this on a wide field refractor, such as something in the 400 millimeter range, you could be enjoying anything up to two and a half degrees of true field of view, which is taking in a massive portion of sky through the 24 pan. Why this eyepiece commands such a high price? First of all, it is actually maximizing the field of view through the one and a quarter hole that this is attached to. Next is the build quality. The machining, the knurling here uh, around the pan is very, very high quality. The rubber eye cup, this is a, an, a, an eyepiece that my friend has owned for many years, still is as it came out of the box, no degradation whatsoever. In terms of internally, it has six glass elements and it's got blackened edges inside to reduce all that reflectivity uh, and make sure that the light is well controlled. The appreciation at the eyepiece for me is this, pinpoint stars edge to edge. Maybe some tiny amount of pin cushion distortion and a tiny bit of blue fringing on the stars at the very edge. However, it's barely noticeable. What I did find is that as I'm panning around, I'm getting fantastic views, sharp, all the way across the eyepiece and you really have to look for any defects there in the field of view. Chromatic aberration, non-existent. This actual configuration provides remarkable views. Buy once, cry once. This is really that type of situation. Deep sky objects, you really do need to lower your expectations and come at it with the viewpoint that those photons are traveling a long, long time to enter your skull through that tube there. And I think when you have that perspective, you tend to be a little bit more in awe of what you're actually seeing. If you come at it with the perspective of astrophotography, you'll be sorely disappointed because it's nothing like you would see on social media or in, you know, astro images. It's nothing like that. But just because it's nothing like that doesn't make it any less significant. It's just a different way to enjoy the night sky. And people have jumped on my comment section before and say, said that they sold all their astrophotography gear to 
do this, do visual and feel more connected to the night sky and I can definitely vouch for that that I'm happy as an astro imager that I got into some visual because let's face it astro imaging now is so automated uh, that while it's actually happening you have nothing to do basically uh, every now and then you might need to address a problem that crops up with autofocus or something um, or guiding but by and large if everything's done you have nothing to do you can go to bed and make love to your wife <laughs>